did it. Just in time for the start of the semester, I put together a starter's guide for biochemistry, things that you should be focusing on in biochemistry, things to know going into biochemistry, things to get you through biochemistry, lots and lots of links to things that I've done, and so here's just a quick guide. First things first, know what you're getting yourself into. So what is biochemistry anyway, and what do biochemists do? Um, know that what biochemists do varies from biochemist to biochemist, and from day to day, even for the same biochemist. Um, so it's really, really cool. It's one of the things I love about biochemistry is there's a lot of variation in what you get to do um, and you get to be really creative. Um, biochemistry at its heart is organic chemistry, yet they're very different in terms of like the actual classes and things like this. Um, and the fact that we're working in a watery environment um, that we often try to avoid in organic chemistry. So I have a post on kind of like how to approach biochemistry with an organic chemistry mindset, like fresh from your OCHEM class or whatever, um, then how do you go and apply that to biochemistry? What's the sort of perspective that you should take? I also have a post on what structural biology is. Um, so structural biology is intimately related to biochemistry. So structural biology tries to figure out like what are the shapes of molecules, like proteins and nucleic acids, like what do they actually kind of look like at the atomic level? Like how are they laid out? And then like, how does that relate to their function? And that function is typically what we're dealing with when we're talking about the biochemistry of it. Um, and so I have a post on that. Also a post on just like general advice for people starting out in science um, and kind of just thoughts about perspectives in science um, and seeing yourself as a scientist. Okay, so now for the more serious stuff, or I guess that was not, not that that wasn't serious, but now we've got to get down to business and review what we should know and then learn new stuff. So in terms of reviewing, I have a post on organic chemistry to review for biochemistry, the sorts of things that you should really focus on um, when you're looking over your old OCHEM notes, um, what types of things um, maybe not so important for biochemistry, but some of the things are really important for biochemistry. Um, and so which of those are those really important things? I have a post on that. I also have a post on like what to review from thermodynamics for biochemistry. So thermodynamics, things like free energy, entropy, enthalpy, these are all going to play, come into play over and over again in biochemistry, whether we're talking about binding, whether we're talking about enzyme catalysis, um, whether we're talking about things like pH. Thermodynamics is integrated like throughout it, all of it. So you need to go and review some of the things. And so I have a post on that. You also need to be really familiar working with concentrations and metric conversions. Um, and so basically I have a post on that, a video on that and a guide on that. Um, you just gotta get really comfortable with working with those concentrations, working with those conversions. Um, when you're doing those problems, when you're doing the, your stuff in the lab, this is going to be really, really crucial. Um, I also recommend, highly recommend that you learn the word parts. So roots, prefixes, and suffixes. So a lot of these you're probably already familiar with. Some of them might be new, but learning these word parts is then going to make it so that you can see a word and kind of like predict what it means um, without having to actually go and look it up. Um, so learning those word parts is going to help you out greatly. And I have a downloadable guide to them as well as a video walking you through them and some examples um, and the post. So going back kind of to those concentrations and that sort of thing, it's important that when you're in biochemistry, you kind of like have things, a, per, a sense of perspective and scale. Um, so we're dealing often with really, really tiny things, big numbers of really tiny things or um, and so you want to get used to working with and interconverting between um, small numbers. And I say small numbers, but really I, they are big numbers. But when we're talking about like micromoles and stuff, that's still a lot because a mole is like six times 10 to the 23rd. So even if you have a micromole, even if you have a millionth of that, that's still going to be a big number. Um, but in terms of like metric prefixes and things, we're dealing with the small ones. We're dealing with things like micro and um, nano and sometimes even like pico and fento. Um, so you want to be able to inconvert between those. And so I have a guide for that, a post on that and a video. 
Um, in addition to keeping a sense of like how big things are and what concentrations are, you also want to kind of keep in mind that all of this is happening typically inside of like a cell or something like that. So we might study it in vitro. We might study it like in a test tube outside of a cell, outside of the normal context. But it's important to remember that normal context. And this is going to come into play too when we talk about things like free energy and how that's actually going to be deeply um, dependent on the conditions that a reaction is happening in or something is happening in. So from the very beginning, you want to kind of like get that sense of perspective. And so I have a post on that. Um, and I also have links there to a really helpful book, um, Cell Biology by the Numbers. It's like this free ebook that you can get or you can download it from their website. So really helpful. And hopefully that post is too. Okay, so now you're actually in the class. You want to focus on the important concepts. And so I have things that I think are important. Um, so my recommendations of things to focus on in biochemistry, I have a post on that, a downloadable outline. Um, and a video walking you through that outline. And so this is what the things that I'm going to focus on in my teaching um, and that I hope my students take away um, and focus on as well. There are some equations that you have to use in biochemistry. I'm one of those people I really love like intuitive thinking. I want, I want you to be able to think like a molecule. Um, I find that's really, I, by thinking like a molecule, you can kind of really get a deep understanding of things. But there are times when we have to use that math. And so when we have to use that math, then we turn to those key biochemistry equations. And I have a downloadable guide to them here, as well as a video walking you through them. I'm also not a fan of like rote memorization, memorizing things just for the sake of memorizing things I don't think is helpful, especially with Google and stuff so that you can just look things up so quickly. But there are some things that are important to memorize, I think, um, so that basically it facilitates an easy conversation between, um, between like biochemists and other scientists and things like this. And it's going to kind of make it so that you can you can connect concepts more easily because you're able to recognize, oh, right. Um, so we have this cysteine, it has that sulfhydro group. Um, so maybe it's going to form a crosslink and stuff like this without having to actually go and look up this structure. Um, so there are some things worth memorizing, um, including a lot of stuff about amino acids, their, um, their, what functional groups they have, what properties they have, how what their abbreviations are all that stuff. Um, and there's some other things that I think are important to memorize as well. But for the most part, I, I focus more on the concepts than just the memorization for the things that you need to have an understanding of those concepts without having to go and look things up. Okay, studying strategically. So I have a post on some study suggestions. One of my favorite study tools is making mind maps. Um, and so basically these charts, these like flow charty things where you connect concepts. I'm all about connections if you haven't um, if you haven't gotten that already, um, taken that figured that out already, I guess whatever the wording is. But basically, it's really important to be able to draw connections between different concepts. It's going to help you get a deeper understanding of the concept as well as see how everything is interconnected um, and get a deeper understanding of things that you're not even learning about right at that moment. So this mind map's really helpful for that. Um, a lot of times you're gonna be turning to Google. Google is a very helpful tool, um, but it can sometimes not be the best for scientists. Um, it doesn't really, it does a lot of things based on what most people are looking up. So if, if you search a term that has a specific meaning in biochemistry, but it also has like a general meaning, you're probably going to get um, the posts about that more general meaning of the term instead of the specific word, the specific usage that you're looking for. And so I have a guide on how to kind of like strategically type things and that sort of thing, as well as a video um, so that you can get the most useful results in the quickest amount of time. So Googling strategically is another important skill both for your this class and the rest of your life as a scientist and just life. Okay, speaking of important skills, reading scientific articles is really, really, really important. And it's really hard, especially in the beginning. It takes a lot of practice, 
but really it's it's a really crucial skill and you kind of just have to work through it, um, get lots of practice. Um, it's important though that you realize that there are things that you can do in order to kind of um, strategically read so that you're not just wasting hours and hours trying to get through a paper. So I have posts on like getting first getting familiar with the layout of the science articles. It's going to help you kind of know where to go for what. Um, I also have a post on like the logistics, just like things like peer review, the publishing process, what's a preprint, what's open access. Once you're familiar with like kind of what's going on in a science article, now let's talk about reading them. Um, so like I said, I like to read these strategically. You're not always going to approach an article for a deep read. Sometimes you're approaching it just to look up something about a method. Um, sometimes you just want to see if it looks interesting. Um, sometimes you just need a, a piece of data from it. So I have some a couple posts on reading science articles strategically, as well as accompanying videos. Some other resources. So I have this page of like key biochemistry resources. This is just like some of my favorite books, websites, videos, um, you name it, lots and lots of resources. So I have a pull page with lots of links to different things. I'm in a video of it here. I also have a guide to key biochemistry databases, things like Uniprot, Protparam, PDB. Um, so a downloadable guide with links to all of those, as well as kind of like what you use them for and a video walking you through. I also have some structural biology resources. So I come from a structural biology background. So I'm very familiar with things like the tools used for crystallography and cryo EM. Um, and so I have a whole page of resources on that, um, as well as a downloadable guide and a video. I also have my website, I have a glossary um, with lots of different terms that you might come across. And I also have a page of like slang. So sometimes we use terms that just like, they're not really official terms, so we kind of just use them, especially in the lab. Um, or there's terms that we kind of forget that is not a normal word to use and might accidentally slip up and use it just like in normal conversation. Um, and so I have a post to kind of like help you with that as well. And I really hope my students will just like ask, will ask me if they don't know what a word means, because especially coming straight for, from a resource, um, not a resource, a research environment to one of like teaching mainly, it, I can, it's, it'll be easy to forget that I need to actually like, I haven't explained a term. Um, and so I hope that people always ask me anyway. Start speaking of the lab, I have a page with an overview of lab techniques. So I have posts on lots and lots and lots of different techniques. Um, it looks like I need to make this hyperlink active, but I will. I have a video walking you through the main techniques that you use in biochemistry, as well as a whole page of posts on techniques. Um, the very common and the more obscure, but things that I've just happened to do and stuff like this. I also have a quick start guide for starting off in research with good habits. So maybe your first time in a lab, your first um, research experiences. I have a video and a guide um, that's here. When you're doing lab, it's easy to kind of like start making messes and hopefully just of your bench. Um, you don't wanna have a mess of your notes. You wanna stay organized. Um, you want to know where things are and which box and where in the which freezer and things like this. So I have a video on staying organized while sciencing, as well as this downloadable guide. I also have advice for experimenters in training. Um, similarly to, to like things that you should be focusing on in the lab, what um, kind of I like to emphasize knowing what's going on in the different steps of an experiment so that you both get a better, deeper appreciation and you're able to like troubleshoot and things like this. So I have a video on that. If you are interested in grad school, I have a whole page of posts on like things about related to how do you apply? What is grad school? How do you apply to grad school? How do you get through grad school? What comes after grad school? This sorts of thing. So I have a whole page of posts on it here. And then finally, whether or not you want to go to grad school, whether you want to um, go and be a soccer player, I don't care. Um, I want you to pay it forward. So I want here, I have some advice for college graduates, past, present, and future, um, and thoughts on communicating knowledge, basically. 
I'm all about paying it forward. Re learning is a privilege. Um, and so we have like, when you get that privilege, you then want to go and share that knowledge with others. Um, and remember that you have like all of this background, all of this information that a lot of people don't have. Um, and so do your best to throughout your training, throughout your whole lifetime, really be paying it forward and helping teach others. Um, and so, yeah, so I hope that this helps and I will post a link to this and I will make those links live that weren't live and happy learning biochemistry. I think it's a really exciting, really exciting field. And I hope that you find it really interesting too.